Yo, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to UndergroundWellness.com. You know who this guy is right here. Dr. Tom O'Brien is back in the house. Welcome back, doctor. Thank you, Sean. The Thank doctor you. is from thedoctor.com, and he's also the host of the upcoming Gluten Summit. So we just got done with Real Food Con, and like we just want to keep the information coming. So this guy's got literally a seven-day summit all about gluten and why you should not let it cross your lips because there's a lot of lots of problems with it. He's going to tell you about some of those problems today. So we decided to put together just a few videos. What's three videos we're going to put together yes. with some of the gems, some of the nuggets that he pulled from the summit when he was doing the recordings. And so, Doctor, first of all, why did you decide to do a gluten summit? Sean, the British Medical Journal tells us that when translational research, and that means research that's going to change the way doctors think, translational research is published, the average is 17 years before the doc down the street is using that information. Hmm. That's the average. That's not the exception. It's the average. So when they first learned about cholesterol and heart disease, 17 years wow. before doctors down the street were checking cholesterol. Mm -hmm. It was just two years ago that they published the studies acknowledging there is this thing called non-celiac gluten sensitivity, meaning celiac's bad, and we'll talk about that in the summit, but also you don't have to have celiac. You can just be sensitive to gluten, and it's profound in the impact it has, but the history would be it'll take 17 years before you guys know about this. Hmm. I'm not going to let that happen, so I want to move the needle so that by January of 2014, we have hundreds of thousands of people and doctors that understand you just got to check if this is a problem for you yeah i'm glad you're doing this so that's quite a lag period 17 17 years, years. it doesn't oh, make sense goodness. but that's the average we're going to speed this up for a lot of people that's exactly right so you, you've come with some some gems you're going to drop some truth bombs as i call it on my audience here yes. what's the first gem you got for us the first one is about the brain we think of a food sensitivity as being a gut problem and if you don't have problems when you eat something in your gut you there's no problem but for every one person that has problems in their gut, there are eight that have it somewhere else in their body, not in their gut. And the most common organ is the brain mm. to be affected. It might be brain fog, it might be seizures, it might be migraines, it could be just a loss of cognitive function, it could be depression or anxiety. And there are hundreds of studies of showing that it reverses for some people on a gluten-free diet if they have this gluten sensitivity. Mm -hmm. so, there are 16 different mechanisms that I know. One of the mechanisms, a very common one, is a lack of blood flow going into the brain. That's it's called hypoperfusion. All right, my man, all right. <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> We've been playing Scrabble. <laughs> <laughs> hypoperfusion. It means a lack of blood flow. And so the brain has 25% of the blood at any one time that's in the body. It's up in the brain because there's so much activity going on there, right? Yeah. I'm from the Midwest. When you water your lawn, we know in the Midwest, you have to soak it in the summertime for a good hour, a couple of hours, once or twice a week. If you water it for five minutes, the grass dies because the blades of grass don't absorb water. You've got to get the water down to the roots, right? So you've got to soak it. So is your brain soaked with blood? When it's not soaked with blood, it's called hypoperfusion. Mm -hmm. And they did a study and they showed that 73%, that's three out of four people, with the sensitivity to gluten have a lack of blood flow into some part of their brain. Hmm. Now, what does that mean? Cross your legs for two hours. Stand up and run. You can't. Give your kid toast for breakfast. Send him to school to learn. If he's sensitive to gluten, part of his brain, he has a 73% likelihood, part of his brain's not gonna work right. That's, that happens every day. E every day. Every single day. It's some type of sh like cereal with gluten in it, or it's toast, or whatever, the kids that's go right. to school. And sandwiches. And they're expected to learn. And they're that's, expected that's to sit there and have their brains mean. open and being able to function well. So I went to the experts. I went to David Perlmutter, Dr. David Perlmutter, who is probably the leading neurologist in the country that looks at neurology problems from a big picture perspective called functional medicine. He's the author of Grain Brain, right? He's the author of Grain Brain. It good just book. came out. Really good book. It was a New York Times bestseller before it was released, mm. meaning everyone wants this book, so they ordered it ahead of time. It already made the number one list. He was great on my show last week. It was really good. He's a, you hooked that up, as a matter of fact. Really good show. He is, I'm, I'm really glad that worked out because <laughs> he's a great guy and he's very knowledgeable. He's the kind of guy we want on our team when we're looking at brain function, right? right? And what did David tell us? I brought this so I could read to you the exact words that he said, because it's so cool the way he said it. First thing, what he talked about is any brain dysfunction, 
any brain dysfunction, in general, we know is inflammation in the brain. There's, there's fire in the brain. And Dr. Perlmutter's uh, premise is, don't treat the smoke, don't treat the symptoms, put the fire out, yeah. right? That, that's his premise. So there's two things, two quotes that I brought to share with you that he said in my interview with him. The interview was fabulous. He said, as it relates to the brain and things like headaches and seizures, we're seeing an incredible explosion of data coming our way demonstrating that in fact, many neurological problems have at their core anything that can induce inflammation. So it's fire in the brain. And front and center, certainly, in my mentality is gluten because gluten sensitivity is so vast. He checks every neurological patient for gluten sensitivity just to make sure because it's so obvious that mm -hmm. if they've got that problem, it likely will affect their brain. Right. The second thing he said, all of your listeners now are prepared for the chance occurrence of helping either themselves or somebody else that they love by knowing how widespread the consequences of gluten sensitivity are and that gluten sensitivity can be a neurologic problem without any involvement of the gut whatsoever. So you don't have to have digestive symptoms. You don't have to have digestive symptoms. You don't have to have, you eat it, you may not be able to tell that you got a problem going on because you think of your gut and how you feel when you like, if you feel bloated or mm -hmm. full. Mm -hmm. You may just have a migraine that comes an hour later. You may have a seizure that comes tomorrow. You, you would, might have a memory issue that you think you're just getting older. You mean, how yeah. many people think that, you know, oh yeah, I'm getting older, I can't remember the way I used to. Oh really, how old are you? Well, I'm 34. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> it could be the toast that they have for breakfast. Listen, people. Really that simple. Li listen, we should be able to learn a new language when we're 80. There's no reason why not. Your brain's supposed to work, but if you keep killing off brain cells year after year after year after year, just a few, it accumulates so that you think that you're getting old, you don't remember the way you used to because you're getting old. No, you're not remembering the way you loose, used to because you're inflamed and you've killed off brain cells for a number of years because of the inflammation that's going so on. So stop eating the foods that cause the inflammation in the first place. Exactly. I like stop that. throwing gasoline on the fire. I like that, man. Yeah. Freeglutensummit.com, head over there. There's gonna be lots of information just like that. You start on November 11th, November 11th. and go through the 17th, 17th. correct? That's right. It's gonna be really good. Head over, freeglutensummit.com. We're gonna come back next Tuesday with one more gem for Dr. Tom O'Brien.